Let's talk about the two main dividend investing strategies. And those strategies are investing for dividend yield or investing in dividend growth. And maybe we can come to a conclusion on which one may be better. And the reason why this is an important topic is because most investors generally fall into one or the other category. And there are many dividend ETFs out there and they all generally either fall into one of the two categories as well. And most new dividend investors focus quite a bit on dividend yield. So I definitely want to have a maybe discussion on which one is better. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this content, give this video a like. It would be greatly appreciated. It'll help this video get out there to a wider audience and also subscribe for future content. So what is dividend yield? Dividend yield is a pretty easy concept. It is the amount of money a company pays shareholders for owning a share of its stock divided by its current stock price. So that's a pretty simple concept. So in SCHD's case, you can simply get the dividend yield by taking the annual dividend and then dividing it by its current share price. In which case you basically get a dividend yield of around 4%. Now, generally speaking, more mature companies are the most likely to pay dividends. These companies are late in their business cycle and they decide to pay out their investors through cash, a dividend, rather than reinvest that money into their business. So one popular ETF is SPH, the, the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF. Now, if we look at the list of stocks that this ETF holds, you'll notice most of them are very well established, well developed and late in their business cycle. And a little bit about why somebody might prefer high yield dividend investing to dividend growth investing. Generally speaking, high yield dividend investors want high current income. In other words, they want to take their money and put it somewhere where they can earn a high amount of passive income with the easiest amount effort possible. So in the case of SPYD, the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF, this is another very popular dividend ETF that high dividend yield investors go to. If you were to invest $100,000 into this ETF, you would roughly get $4,590 and then you can kind of go up from there. So if you had $500,000 and you put it into this ETF, you would be passively earning around $23,000 per year. Now, that is a good amount of supplemental income for most people, considering the average salary in the country is probably between forty dollars to $50,000. So if you think about it, you are making half of that completely passively without having to do anything. Now, of course, that yield comes with a trade-off. Nothing in investing is free. So if you're getting that cash, then these companies are not investing in themselves to grow more. So you are not going to see a large amount of growth with these ETFs or high yield dividend stocks either. You see over the past five years, SPYD increased in price only about 12.5%. Now contrast that with the S&P 500 over the past five years, which increased in price around 80.5%. And you'll see the large difference between yield investing and just general tracking the market. So if you are going for these high yield companies, you're really not going to perform in line with the general market. You will, however, of course, get that nice passive income dividend yield, which you won't get from the S&P 500. On top of that, because a lot of these ETFs and stocks consist of a number of companies which are late in their business cycle and are well established, you're not really going to see too much volatility with these stocks either. So you're not really going to see those huge swings, which you might see from the overall market or the growth sector. Now let's move on to dividend growth investing. Now the main part of dividend growth, of course, is the appreciation of its dividend over time. In other words, a company can choose to raise its dividend from 25 cents a share to 30 cents a share and then so on and so forth. So in year one, they may be paying 25 cents a share, year two, 30 cents, year three, 35 cents. And that may continue there on in the future. Now, of course, what that looks like is a increasing dividend and sometimes it increases rapidly so. So VIG, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, is an ETF that I myself own 
and it has an investment methodology of investing in companies with a history of increasing their dividends over time. So if we look at this ETF and go backward in time and look at its dividend in the cash amount column, you will see that that dividend increases over time. And in 2015, it was paying 46 cents a share approximately in March of 2015. And then in the most recent March in 2024, it was paying 77 cents per share. So you definitely see that large dividend increase of almost twice the amount. Now with dividend growth investing, these companies are generally pretty good companies as well that are increasing their earnings potential over time. That gives them the opportunity to continue to raise that dividend year over year. The companies that you will see are generally less well established and not so late in their growth cycle compared to the high yield companies. So what you're going to see is a good diversified list of companies that still have earnings potential over time. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Broadcom, JP Morgan Chase, ExxonMobil, United Healthcare, Visa, Procter & Gamble, Costco, and MasterCard. These are all great companies. Some are later in their growth cycle than others, but at the same time, they all still generally have room to grow over time as well. Now on the positive side, what that means is that because these companies aren't so late in their growth cycle and because they're choosing to still retain a good amount of that cash for their own business development, these companies tend to grow in capital appreciation more so than high dividend yield companies. So if we look at this, VIG is up over the past five years of about 58%. And if you remember, SPYD was only up 14%. Now, if we do compare that to the S&P 500, even VIG comes short, but it is still far greater growth than high yield dividend investing. Somewhat similar to high yield dividend investing, a dividend appreciation investing is kind of lower volatility than the overall market as well. Because these companies have a long track record of increasing their dividends over time, they're generally managed very well and are devoted to that strategy themselves. If you look at this list of stocks, I think we'll all agree that none of these stocks are basically very volatile or at risk of going bankrupt. And many of these stocks won't go up or down too much over time. So you're also going to see a little bit less volatility like the higher yield dividend stocks compared to the overall market. And I think an extremely important concept, especially with new dividend investors, is understand something called yield on cost. And that is what you're getting in the dividend compared to the price of the asset you bought it at. So in other words, yield on cost can really increase for dividend appreciation stock. So in 2015, you could have bought VIG for $78.05 per share. However, the ETF in 2024 is currently paying you a dividend of $3.60 per share per year. So in 2015, remember, you bought it for $78.05 but now it is paying $3.60 per share. That means your current yield on cost for VIG is 4.61% had you have bought in 2015. And we can go back even further just to make even more of an example of this. Let's go back to 2009. Had you have been buying VIG in 2009, you could have been picking it up for $42.24 a share and you're currently getting paid $3.60 per share. That means you have a current yield on cost for every single share that you bought in 2009 of $8.52. In other words, if you were 20 years old in 2009 and you were buying this ETF up, you'd be getting 8.52% for every single dollar that you put into VIG in 2009 today. So that is a great yield on cost. So picture that another way. If you were to buy a house in 2009 for $250,000, basically doing the dividend calculation out from that period, you would have been getting paid 2.5% yield. So that would equate to $6,000. 
Now, had you have held on to that house during that time, and since the amount of money you put in, of course, didn't change, you still had $250,000 of your cash into it, and you just waited and waited and just increased rents along the way, you would be currently earning $21,250 from those increases over time. So I think that that is a good way of understanding yield on cost. So the longer you hold something, the more you're gonna get for your cash return over time. So that means if you're younger, it definitely is beneficial for you to go about investing into dividend appreciation because you're going to have so many years to see that initial investment that you made have its dividend grow over time. And of course, this is only 15 years. So you can imagine over 30 years, your yield on cost for every single dollar you put in today, your yield on cost may be 15, 20, 25% over time the gain is going to be incredible the amount of money you're going to be getting for the amount of money that you put in today in the future is going to be an incredible return and then on top of that if you want to of course see your capital grow over that time as well then dividend appreciation is going to be the way to go because those companies have more room to grow versus the companies that offer a higher yield Furthermore, if you're holding this in a taxable account, high yield may not be for you because you are going to be paying taxes on those dividends. Really high yield should be reserved to people that really want to supplement their income because they're either retired or they're financially independent and they don't really need to see their investment grow over time. If I were given, let's say, five to $10 million and I didn't want to work anymore, I would definitely go for high yield and just sit back and collect dividends. But I want to see my asset grow more, which is why my main ETF that I own is VIG, and then I also own SCHD, which is kind of that great equilibrium. So in short, if you're younger, want your room to grow, want that yield on cost to grow over time, definitely go for dividend appreciation. If you're financially independent, possibly a bit older, and need some income to supplement whatever you have, then definitely go for yield. Remember everybody, if you did enjoy this content, leave this video a like. It would be greatly appreciated to help this content get out there to a wider audience and also subscribe for future content. And I'll see you in our next video.